this video we're going to prove Cauchy's theorem for a billion groups. It goes on to say suppose G is a finite group. It should say a finite a billion group. such that P divides the order of the group, where P is the prime number. Then there's an element, a non-identity element in G, such that A to the P is equal to E. G must be finite, it must be a billion, and P must divide the order of the group. Then I guarantee you, there's a non-identity element in G such that, in this case A, such that when you raise it to the pth power, you get E back. You get back the identity. If you like watching mathematical proofs, like the one I'm about to do, subscribe to my channel because that's what we do here. Do mathematical proofs. Okay, so we're going to prove this by induction. We will proceed by induction over the order of G. Now, if the order of G is 1, that is G is thus just the identity element, then the theorem is vacuously true. Then the theorem is vacuously true. What does this mean? For you to sh show me that I have a finite billion group and P does divide the order of the group. For you to show me that this theorem is wrong, you need to convince me that there's a not, that you can not find, that is, for no matter what non-identity element in G, a to the P is never E. Well, you can't find any A's in G that satisfy that. So the theorem is said to be vacuously true. So we got it. We have our base case. Now, we suppose that if G is a billion, G is a billion and has order less than O of G and the order of G is less than O of G. This O of G is talking about this group up here. Then there exists an A in G such that A to the P equals Z. So as long as the group has order let me say that more carefully. So long as the a billion group has order less than O of G, then the results follow. That's called an induction hypothesis. Okay, so we have that. Now, let's suppose the following. Suppose that G has no non-trivial subgroups. G has no non-trivial subgroups. The trivial subgroups are the identity, their group or the, 
that just has the identity or the subgroup that just has the identity and the group itself. The group itself is a subgroup of itself. Those are the trivial subgroups. A non-trivial subgroup would be one where it's bigger than the identity but less than the group G itself. This group has none. Well, that implies by previous theorem, one of my previous videos, that implies that G is cyclic of prime order. Well, what's the only prime that can divide a cyclic group of prime order? The answer is, you know, the only prime number that seven is prime. The only prime number that divides seven is seven. 17 is prime other than one. The only prime number that divides 17 other than one is 17 itself. Now, if G is of prime order, then the order can't be one. That is, G cannot just be the identity. Okay, G is a prime order. Order, okay. This prime order is the P referred to in the theorem. It has to be. It's the only prime that divides that prime. Actually, one is not prime, so ignore when I said don't consider one. The only prime number that divides this prime number is itself. Okay. Now, the order of our element in a group must divide the order of the group. That is... The only numbers that divide P are 1 and P. And 1 is reserved for just the element E. E is the only element in each and every group that has order of 1. So all the other elements in the group must have order of our P. Then there exist P minus 1 elements in G such that there must be P minus 1 elements okay, in G such that A is not equal to E and A to the P is equal to E. Every non- identity element in this group satisfy that. Okay, so not only did I show one element, I showed P minus one elements. Now, this is where G had no non-trivial elements. There's two more cases. Suppose G does have a non-trivial subgroup N and P does divide the order of N. The next and last case will be P does not divide the order of N. Okay. Since G is a billion, that implies that N is a billion. Notice students have a hard time with that. And let's try to clear it up. You have a group G. And these are elements. And G is a billion. Let's call that element A and this element B. That is A times B is equal to B times A. Because that's G. 
just because some person comes and puts a circle around some of those elements in G and names that set N, whether well, it's a subgroup or not, there is absolutely no reason on earth to now assume that AB does not equal to BA because some person drew a circle. It doesn't work like that. Okay. You know, now I remove the circle, you're going to say, oh, AB equals BA. I put back the circle. Now you're going to tell me that that statement is no longer true. Think about that one. That's not going to happen. So N is a billion. And... P divides the order of N. Okay. Now, the order of N is less than the order of G since N is a subset of G but not equal to it. Okay. N has less... The order of N, the number of elements in N is less than the number of elements in G. Ah, we have in a bit, where are we? We have in a billion group whose order is less than G and P divides it. That's exactly what, what our inductive hypothesis is for. By our inductive hypothesis you don't have to write this, but I will, since P divides the order of N, N is a billion, and the order of N is less than the order of G, then by our inductive hypothesis, there exists a little G in N, such that g to the p is equal to the identity. But remember, this is all happening in g2. Okay, once again, this is g and there's an element little g. And it and somebody puts a circle around here. There's other elements inside and outside. And I tell you that this element, G, when I raise it to the P power, and P, sorry, G, is in this set N. And I tell you, you know what? When I raise G to the P power, you won't believe it, but I get E. If I raise P, G to the P power, I get E. Well, it doesn't matter whether we have this set N or not. Okay, doesn't matter. What matters is that we're in G and G to the P power is E. Okay, so we satisfied our element and there is one thing wrong, I should say that G is not the identity element. And G to the P is E. And if G to the P is the identity in N, then G to the P will be the identity in G. They have the same identity. Okay, so like I said, the next and last case will be where G does have a non-trivial subgroup N and P does not divide N, the order of N. Okay. Suppose G has a non-trivial subgroup N such that the P does not divide 
the order event. Okay. Now, n is a billion since g is. That implies that n is normal in g. Well, that implies that the set gn is an a billion group. But this group is less than order of g elements. The order of g mod n is the order of g over the order of n. Now, let's write it here. Since n is non-trivial, since n is not just e, that implies that the order of n is at least 2. Well, if you take this number and you divide it by 2 or 3 or 4, you get smaller than that number. If you have 10 candies and you share it with 2 people, you divide it by 2, the number got smaller. Less than the order of G. Okay, less than the order of G. If you divide it by 3, let's call that number X. 10 will be less than X. In fact, 3 times X would be 10. That means 10 is less than X. If you take 10 and you divide it by 8, you're going to get less than 10 every time. Okay. Now, since P does not divide the order of N, that implies that P does divide the order of G over the order of N, which happens to be the order of G mod N which happens to be less than the order of G. So, P divides the order of this group, which is less than the order of G. Okay, P divides this group whose order is less than the order of G. Induction hypothesis. Oh, and this is a billion. Okay, I said it. It's a billion and its order is less than the order of G by our inductive hypothesis. There exists something in G, G mod N. There exists an NG, which is not the identity element, such that ng to the p, which happens to be n times g to the p, is equal to n. Okay. Do you have to change one thing or add something? This g is in the group g. Now this statement over here this implies that g to the p is an element of n. Ah, it's an element of n. That means, and it has a power of p. That means if I raise this element of n to the order of n power, I'm going to get back e. But I could write this a little bit differently. Is g to the order of n to the p. And this in here is in G. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. I found an element in G that when I raise it to P, I get E. It's looking good. It remains to show that G to the order of N is not E. Once I establish that, we're done. Suppose otherwise.
suppose that g to the order of n is e. Well, that implies that ng to the order of n, well, that's ng to the order of n, which is ne, which is n. Okay, so let's write that last statement down. ng to the order of n is equal to n. Now, combining with the following, things start to get interesting. Combining that last statement with, we had that ng to the p is equal to n, and p does not divide the order of n. This all implies that ng is equal to n. That implies that g is an element of n. Okay, let's see where we said g was not an element of n. Well, I'll state it right here. Since that's true, that implies that g is not in n. Okay, g is not in n. Okay, so we have that g is in n. That's a contradiction. So g to the order of n raised to the p equals e. g to the order of n is not e g to the order of n is an element of g. The theorem has been proved. Okay. As always, if you like watching mathematical proofs, subscribe to my channel. That's what we do here. Please tell your friends and family and enemies about my channel especially your enemies. I'm sure you'd be thrilled if they watched this. See you guys in the next video. Watch and learn.